In this video I will tell you about how I've gotten into archery. It was a long and uneven path and I cover it in the introductory uh, part of my book. So basically it all started in my childhood. Uh, like many kids that I grew up with, we used to make these bows out of tree branches and we would just cut a fresh live tree branch and we would bend it a little bit and tie a rope on it and then we would shoot it and obviously because it was still fresh and not dried it just kept giving and giving and giving and we would put more loops uh, on on the ends uh, in order to keep uh, it tight and uh, shooting and it just kept bending and bending more until it kind of bent like this and then at some point it just snapped and that was it and I made many bows sometimes I made a few bows like that in one day they all broke I was uh, kind of frustrated because they only made a few good shots uh, and, and that's it and at that point I left it because that was the limitation of the technology available to me back then and then I returned to archery in 2006 or 7 when I was living and uh, working in the United States. And uh, this time it was an adult uh, approach because I went to the club, the Tangis Archery Lanes in Rhode Island. And Mr. James Dean himself gave me the first lesson he taught me how to shoot like an adult with uh, three fingers uh, the so-called uh, european style or whatnot and uh, i got hooked immediately i was shooting like crazy day and night and thinking about it all the time just uh, uh, any any free second i had i was at the club shooting Luckily for me, there was a small but dedicated die-hard uh, group of traditional archers, traditional league archers, who were shooting wooden arrows, uh, uh, simple bows. Mostly they had American flat bows, uh, no shelves, no sights, uh, no counterweights, uh, and just plain bows. And I fit, fit in with them. I shot with them. They were all really, really good, uh, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun shooting with them. And at that point, I bought my first bow. It was a horse bow, uh, you know, with the um, distinctive shoulder shape and CS and etc. And I was shooting it, loved it. Three fingers, though, in the beginning. And at some point, uh, uh, around this time uh, maybe in 2008 my wife joined me we we for for a short period of time we shot together and uh at that time also i started transitioning from three fingers to thumb archery and it was very frustrating for me because you know uh as when you put an arrow on the right side as opposed to left side uh the the archer paradox obviously works now in this way, in this direction. And it was hard to accommodate for that because as I was aiming uh, the same way as with three fingers and arrow on the left side, but now that arrow was on the right side, the paradox was working on the other direction. So my arrows kept hitting two or three feet to the right. Of where the of where I was aiming and that was frustrating because I thought that maybe I couldn't master it or something and it, it would be a shame because this is traditional for me this is a matter of honor to be able to master it properly and I was so frustrated I contacted uh, Thomas Duvernay who uh, wrote a few books on Korean archery made a film about it He's an expert, obviously, and he gave me an advice to uh, twist the bow hand a little bit to kind of compensate for this archer paradox and shooting 
on the right side and it worked i finally started improving a little bit started hitting the targets and uh, things finally started coming along well also uh, at that point i started getting deeper into research uh, because mm, you know uh, i'm a I'm a book guy, uh, I always like to read about what I do, know the history, the traditions, and also it was a matter of uh, kind of obligation uh, because I, I couldn't shoot, because I was a, a representative of one of the horseback cultures and native, I had to follow my people's version of it, which is Kazakh. So I wanted to find an information on Kazakh archery, not Mongolian archery, not uh, Tibetan or Manchu or Turkish. As much as I love them, I had to do uh, our own version of it. And there was almost none information on it available. The sources in English ignored it completely. And the sources in Russian or Kazakh languages uh, at best had few paragraphs, couple pages, or one chapter at the most devoted to Kazakh archery. And so I figured uh, at that point I had gathered so much information on archery that I had to do it. It just, it was my kind of responsibility. It was my duty to put this book together. And I started writing it in 2007 and 8, I believe. And uh, it was coming along really well. Uh, I already started contacting publishers and etc. And then, uh, of course, uh, 2008 and 2009, the Great Recession happened. I lost my job. We went into uh, economical hardship, had to downsize uh, everything, uh, and I just had to wrap it up completely, just uh, kind of put it on the back shelf for a long time. And we were surviving and uh, at the end of this tough period we had to uh, we ended up coming back to Kazakhstan now since we lived in the United States I lived in the United States for eight years I kind of lost touch completely with uh, my, uh, my with my friends and colleagues in Kazakhstan so I had to start from the scratch as I was an immigrant once again in my own uh, town in my hometown so it also took a few years uh, until I finally could get back to writing finishing this book in 2015 and I even even at that at that time I was so busy that I I only had time to put it together do the editing and etc and just get it published which happened in 2016 and uh, the uh, hard copy version of it came out hard cop cover black and white uh, images uh, dual language uh, it has Russian and, and English versions together so uh, my first book uh, was very proud of it but um, one thing kind of uh, bothered me a lot at that time is that this long period that I had to put it off and not uh, develop my archery I was kind of uh, stuck in 2008 and 2009-ish in terms of my knowledge which back then in 2009 was uh, pretty much up to date I read all the books uh, written on the subject I was practicing I was training but this long period of inactivity when I had to just, uh, you know, uh, postpone it, a lot of new information happened, a lot of new research, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of new competitions. So things advanced a lot. So I had to kind of make it up for that, and I decided to make uh, an updated version of it, uh, which is this version. But this time I made English-only version. And uh, also, I uh, decided to not go with the publishing uh, on, on paper and just went straight ahead for digital book format. 
So uh, this book is now available on Amazon under my name, Daniel Bideralin. Uh, it is in color, has a lot of illustrations, uh, English only version, new cover, obviously, as you can see, new cover design, a little bit more uh, visual. I added a lot of my artwork in the end section of it. I added uh, a lot of information in the history section. Uh, uh, which I will be talking in my next video a lot. And so uh, this was uh, the next generation of this book. But uh, it doesn't end there because uh, that's 2016. Obviously, uh, with the speed we're moving today, uh, which is great, so much more new information now available, especially my research in historical aspect of it. I have now uh, enough information to make like uh, part two or something, which uh, is which I am planning to do one day, hopefully soon enough. But uh, for now, this is it. Uh, we're talking about this particular book. Uh, it's available on Amazon, like I said, and I will continue uh, covering what's in there in the next video. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, I will see you back shortly.